Good morning, St. B. Good morning. Direct your attention to the back of the bulletin where we have some announcements today. The Christmas card exchange box, which is located on the table outside of the sanctuary, is available for all to place and receive their Christmas cards. Today there is an open table meeting at 11 a.m. Also today is the last day to order your poinsettias. December 12th, Ann Doris United Women of Faith meeting at 10.30 a.m. in the sanctuary. The program is by the nursery school. December 13th, Fuel is to meet at 9.30 a.m. They will be double bagging. December 16th, United Women of Faith unit gathering and brunch at 9.30 a.m. All ladies and children are welcome. No men. No men. <laughs> December <laughs> December 20 and 27, they will not have fuel. We will not have fuel those days. December 24th and 31st, the 9 a.m. worship service will be moved to 10 a.m. with no Sunday school. Everybody remember, or else you'll be here a whole hour early and wondering why nobody else is here. Uh, Christmas Eve. Join us on Christmas Eve at 10 a.m for a family-friendly Christmas Eve service that includes a pop-up Christmas pageant. Everyone will have a role, no matter your age. Then, at 6 p.m., we will gather again for our traditional candlelight Christmas Eve with Holy Communion by intention. Following the service, you are invited to take home your poinsettias. December 25th through the 29th, the office will be closed for Christmas. There's no Bible study this week. Bible study will resume on January 17th of next year. And of course, January 1st, the office will be closed for New Year's Day. As always, everyone please sign your attendance pad at the end of the pew so you're here. We know you are here to worship with us today. Good morning. It is a joy to be with you all in worship this morning. A note about Christmas Eve, it's going to be a lot of fun, y'all. We are going to do what's called a paper bag Christmas pageant, which means that on these steps, there will be paper bags. And when you come in, you will be invited to take a paper bag with no peeking. And in that bag, you will find a character and a costume and you are invited to wear your costume for the pageant. And we will follow a script that is very easy to follow. I promise that there is no rehearsal necessary. And so it will be a time of great joy as we tell the Christmas story together. Most importantly, I hope you know that whether this is your first time or you have been attending for years, whether you're strong in your faith or you still have some questions, no matter your age, your tax bracket, your ability, or the color of your skin, no matter who you love or who loves you, you are welcome here. I invite you now to join me in our call to worship. John the Baptist said, so prepare the way. So family of faith, how do we prepare our minds for worship? We decide to stand in We let go of busy thoughts. We make space for God to speak. How do we prepare our hearts for worship? We bless all emotions. We feel what we feel. We open ourselves up to be moved. How do we prepare our bodies for worship? We take in the scent, sight, and feel of this space. We breathe in God's mercy. We exhale in God's love. How do we prepare our souls for worship? We bring our full selves into this space. We wear our hearts on our sleeves. We trust that even now, God is here. Family of faith. What we practice in worship, we must live out in our daily lives. So prepare the way. Let us worship holy God. I invite you now to stand as you're able as we sing verses 1 through 4 of O Come, O Come, Emmanuel. 
number 211. to remain standing as we affirm our faith together. We believe that a voice cried out in the wilderness saying, prepare the way of the Lord. And so we show up in church pews on cold, blustery days. We march for justice. We roll up our sleeves. We plant trees for our children. We make art. We choose hope. We gather at the table, we set an extra plate, we sing loudly with joy, we share stories and wisdom, we celebrate children, we fall together, we rise together, we love together. We do all these things because we believe that God loves us so much that God shows up here. So we prepare and prepare for that next beautiful day. May it be so. Amen. that there is some tension 
as we light the candle of peace today. Leaders, Christian leaders in Bethlehem have made the request that the peace candle actually remain unlit in solidarity with what is going on in Israel and Palestine. We are going to light the candle today, but we do so acknowledging the deep unrest, injustice, and need for God's peace on earth. I dream of a laundry day where each sock finds its mate. I dream of family homes and their holidays. I dream of good books and homemade meals. I dream of sunset drives with, drives with the window inside. These are beautiful dreams, but I also have urgent dreams. I dream of more bridges and less walls. I dream of more laughter and less fear. I dream of more listening and less tears. But most of all, I dream of, of peace like a river. Today, we light the candle of peace. May it remind us that there is another way. Amen. God of peace, we must admit there are a million things on our minds. We would like to be as focused as John the Baptist, preparing the way, gathering the crowd, spreading the word of your arrival. Maybe then we know peace. However, more often than not, we are a swirling compilation of grocery lists, text messages, emails, and over-referenced to-do lists. So today we ask for your help in preparing the way. Could you start with our ears and then maybe move to our hearts? We'd like to hear you more clearly. Maybe then we'll know peace. Gratefully we pray, amen. This morning we will be reading responsibly from Psalm 85, verses 1 and 2, and then 8 through 13. It can be found on the screens and also on page 806 in the hymn. Lord, you showed favor to your land. You restored the fortunes of Jacob. You the of the people. Let me hear what God will speak. For the Lord will speak peace to his people, to his faithful, 
to those who turn to the Lord in their hearts. Surely the salvation is in hand for those who fear the Lord, that glory may dwell in our Steadfast love and faithfulness will meet. Righteousness and peace will kiss each other. The Lord will give what is good, and our land will yield its increase. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. You may remain seated as we sing together hymn number 117, O God, Our Help in Ages Past. Today's scripture reading can be found in Mark chapter 1, verses 1 through 8. Please stand as you are able for the reading of the word of our Lord. The beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, as it is written in the prophet Isaiah, See, I am sending my messenger ahead of you, who will prepare your way. The voice of one crying out in the wilderness, Prepare the way of the Lord, make his paths straight. John the baptizer appeared in the wilderness, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And people from the whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem were going out to him and were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camel's hair, with a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey. He proclaimed, The one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop down and untie the thong of his sandals. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. Word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. You may be seated. This morning, we continue to hear the stories of those who dream. Last week, we were reminded that those who dream keep awake, and that through the power of community, we are able to stay ready for Christ's return. We are able to find rest at Jesus' feet 
we are better, better able to give ourselves more fully to the work of bringing about the kingdom of God. We are better able to see the dreams we have for ourselves, our community, and our world. We are better able to see the dreams God has for all of humanity. And it is in those dreams that we find hope. So this morning, today we affirm that those who dream prepare the way. John the Baptist comes to prepare the way for the coming of Jesus he calls the crowds into the journey of repentance and transformation. So what does it mean to prepare the way? That might even be too broad of a question at first. So what does it mean to simply prepare? I think about preparing the house for all the upcoming parties and company. I think about preparing meals for the week because my child unfortunately can't eat Diet Coke and Skittles for every meal. I think about preparing for the ACT or the SAT or for the exams I took in college and in seminary and just how last minute and crammed that preparing was. We prepare for meetings and doctor's appointments and the unexpected. We find the right shoes, the right shirt, the right route on our GPS to avoid traffic and tolls. We spend all of this time preparing for the things in our lives. And preparing is an act that, like many things in our Christian faith, is both communal and individual. Because part of preparing the way for peace is preparing ourselves, is letting go of the things that prevent us from peace. It's repenting of the wrongs we have done. It's also this communal reminder that we are on this path together, confessing our sins before God and one another, the gentle reminders when we have gone astray and are in need of God's love and forgiveness. The prayer of confession for today says, Holy God, I wish that peace was something I could buy. I wish that peace could be ordered in a subscription service, found on a map, downloaded in an app, or voted for in a ballot. I wish that peace was as easy as a one-time choice when I was feeling my best. However, what I have found is that peace involves everyday decisions over and over, whether or not I am feeling my best. So today I confess, in front of this community of faith, that I need your help in this Advent season. Prepare the way for greater peace and teach me how to be a part of it. May God forgive us. May God's guiding hand surround us. May we know comfort. May we know peace. This forgiveness is one that was around before Jesus came along. And we hear that in the opening lines of the psalm we read together. It's indicative of this tangible vision of salvation that includes all of creation. 
And the psalmist remembers a time when the ground on which he stood was fertile. This likely included a predictable turning of the seasons and ideal weather for which new life to spring up from the ground at the appropriate time for what comes from above directly impacts what is below. Standing between the rich earth and the life-giving sky, the psalmist witnessed the dwelling of God's glory, which is God's salvation. And God's salvific presence was also felt through forgiveness. God's forgiveness was not a fact separate from the psalmist that he intellectually knew had taken place without touching him. Instead, God's forgiveness was an experience both inside the psalmist at the level of the heart and outside of him in a way that permeated the entire life of the community. Because God is a God of relationship whose very presence invites healing and restoration. And forgiveness was not an idea suggesting that actions didn't matter because there would be no punishment. It was an experience of God's steadfast love and faithfulness reaching through humanity's hardness of heart to soften and turn their hearts to God. with inevitable consequences for reconciling past actions and making a path toward a more humane future. Forgiveness was palpable. So now we find ourselves with John the Baptist preparing the way for people by baptizing them by baptizing of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And there were crowds flocking to him. They were participating in this communal act of preparing for the coming of Christ. And as we reflect on the psalm and on John's baptism of repentance, we are reminded that this season of Advent is one of preparation. We are preparing ourselves and our community for the coming of Christ. So what are the things you need to let go of as we prepare? What are the things you are in need of asking forgiveness for? How are we letting go of the things that hold us back from experiencing the fullness of God's love and grace? How are we challenging systems and institutions that are viewed as normal, but are actually oppressive and contributing to marginalization? T. Denise Anderson writes, Quote, the call to repentance is a call to those who are hurting us to cease and desist. It is a peace order of sorts and an amnesty program. Those who have trespassed against us are being offered a chance to stop. When they take advantage of that opportunity, we find our own respite. Repentance means not just stopping the current trajectory, but also turning back addressing the damage left in one's wake, and vowing never to go down that road again. When our oppressor repents, we can be free. John prepares for us the way of the Lord, like a prophetic GPS device. He highlights not only the route for us to take, but also the place for the Lord to come in, telling us when we need to make a U-turn. 
And so as we prepare the way for the Prince of Peace to dwell among us once more, I invite us into intentional preparation, where we show up for one another, where we show up for our community, where we admit when we are wrong, when we turn our hearts, our minds, our souls back to God. Prepare by Reverend Sarah A. Speed. My dad built me a changing table. For nine months, my mom watched her ankles swell and her belly grow. For nine months, my dad would come home from work, kiss her on the forehead, pressing bangs to skin, and tell her she was beautiful. Then for nine months, he'd slip into the garage to build sawdust sand castles and a dresser out of dreams. I imagine she smiled, perched in that rocking chair. He was in his wood shop, preparing the way. Eighteen years later, I left for college. As I packed my bags, my mom baked blueberry muffins for the road, the smell of home. She wrapped them in foil and placed them in a cardboard box, willing similar layers of protection to be wrapped around me, her little girl. She was preparing the way. My aunts and uncles bought sweatshirts in my new school colors. My dad taught me how to change a tire. My mom gave me the earrings I'd been sneaking from her jewelry box for the last four years. I hid sticky note love letters on the kitchen door for them to find when they returned home. We were quiet in the car. My brother cried. We were all preparing the way. And through these moments, I have come to see that preparation and love can be the same thing. For there is something about love that makes us want to prepare. There is something about love that compels us to throw open the doors, yell it from the rooftop, set the table, decorate the nursery, leave love notes on the back of door, build the changing table, trim the tree, bake muffins for the road, and when it's time, if you must, let go. Preparation and love can be the same thing. Thanks be to God. Amen. As we come to our time of offering this morning, we are actually going to sing during the offertory. The words are not on the screen, but you're invited to turn in your faith we sing, the little black book, to 2095, as we, and we will sing together Star Child as the offering plate is passed. At this time, I invite our ushers to come forward. Let us pray. O oh God, pour out your spirit upon these, our gifts, gifts that have been graciously given to us that we now humbly return to you. May they be used to prepare the way for those to come to Christ. Bless these gifts and those who give them. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
seated. As we come to our time of prayer this morning, our full prayer list can be found on the back of the bulletin. We also lift up in our prayers all of the victims and those affected by yesterday's tornadoes, but especially here in Clarksville and also in Springfield and Hendersonville. We lift them up and pray for healing and recovery. Are there other joys or concerns this morning? Let us go to God in prayer. Holy and loving God, Prince of Peace, O oh God, our help in ages past, our hope for years to come, our shelter from the stormy blast and our eternal home. O oh God, we lift up to you our prayers. Prayers in the midst of devastating storms. Prayers in the midst of loss. Prayers for recovery. Prayers for peace. Oh God, we see the devastation. We see the injustice. We see the unrest. We see the violence of our world. And God, there are times when we want to cry out to you, where are you, O oh God? How long, O oh Lord, must we wait for your peace? How long must we witness the violence and injustice? How long must we witness the pain and despair? Oh God, we lit the candle of peace today. <coughs> As a reminder that your light, that your love, that your peace is coming. Oh God, continue to give us glimpses, give us signs, give us hope. That your peace is near. God, we ask that you continue to show us the signs of your presence among us. We ask that you give us the strength to show up for one another and for our community and for our world. Oh God, we ask that you remind us that you have called us. To prepare the way to bring about your kingdom on earth. 
Oh God, you have called us to your mission and purpose, and you have called us your beloved children who have been created in your own image. Oh God, and now it is as your beloved children that we pray together the prayer that Jesus first taught. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. As we come to the close of our service this morning, I invite you to stand as you are able as we sing together hymn number 213, Lift Up Your Heads, Ye Mighty Gates. time verse 5 of star child hope for peace child god's stupendous sign down to earth child star of stars that shine this year this year let the day arrive when christmas comes for everyone everyone alive Friends, we know that peace is coming. We know that there is hope in the midst of war, of injustice, of all that is going on in our lives. And we know that Christ is coming and that we are called to be part of preparing the way for him as he does. And so, go in peace. In the name of the Creator, the Redeemer, and the Sustainer. Amen.
little rain and that was it. And then from the anchor head, 